This video is sponsored by Sky Zephyrs, a Kickstarter project full of flying vehicles, movement systems, and aerial combat for 5th edition. It's a small team project focused heavily on fully fleshing out three-dimensional movement and detailed explanations of how the heck flying an airship actually works. And how to shoot one out of the sky also. I like this wind current thing a lot. It's confined to just the PDF format, but it comes with an additional system that you can use to quickly throw together flying ships with currently 200 different parts. They're gonna expand on doing stuff in space and submarines too, which makes it seem like they'll be putting passion into this project for quite a while to come. If you want to check out the supplement and the rest of the project, including some Sky Pirate STLs and this absolutely genius idea for a captain, click the link in the description. Thanks team homie and the dude. Here's some Bald Guy Bridge content. I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 for 20 days straight, that's why I've been gone. So why the hell not? This video's about Gale. The learned wizard, the charming gentleman, the walking apocalypse. Listen, if the wizard were given the choice, what food would he be? My stupid drug-addicted boyfriend who's horny for God and magic and also went out into a field to catch and eat a star. Or, or a black hole. Since every other online source of information for all these side characters is literally just how you can f*** them, I want to cover who the heck this guy is. And also how you can f*** him. So you meet Gale like two minutes into the core of the game, where he is seen being born. You can aid in this procedure, or just cut the cord and walk away. This branch of flesh is begging to be pruned, and its sap sucked from. If you accept the child, you will find a beautiful wizard in your party who can blast out fireballs and throw back cheeks on the daily. Wizards are great because you can make them learn every spell in the game. I picked a wizard as well to get along with him, and now we summon this many guys together. Going into the game blind, I found his charm innocent at first, like a guy with delusions of grandeur backed by a good soul with good intentions. And then, spoilers, he smacked me in the head and said, let me eat your necklace or I'm leaving. I have this condition. It's imperative that I find and consume strands of weave at the earliest possible juncture. But suffice it to say that it is a malady I've learned to live with. And he also called my mom a whore. Your mama. My mama. Yeah, your whole family. So I let him eat it and thought, oh, okay, he's just like an alcoholic guy who's making up a dumb story to get his high. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact. It begins with a simple biological deterioration, muscle spasms, disorientation, a slight ringing in the ears, and, left for too long, catastrophe. Artifacts are of little use if you don't live to enjoy them. I did not like him, Sam I am. I did not like those wizard hams. But then he drops a goddamn drama bomb two nights later, telling you the truth. Are you ready? You probably already saw it. So basically he got real good at magic, became favored by Mistra, who is the goddess of magic, flew up into the sky with his penis, and had a romp around with a nut bust so intense it let him see through space and time. At one point he became friends with a Tressum named Terra, and for the life of me I can't find her in the game, somebody help me. So these two ran around doing magic for a magic lady. We also know that a trillion bedillion years ago, a dude named Karsus got so good at magic he killed the goddess of magic who invented magic. But because she's magic, she woke up two minutes later, slightly smaller than before. Magic died for those two minutes, so when she put it back together, she decided on new rules, like, if you try to cast a spell above ninth level, fuck you too bad. Cause Karsus did like a, a million level spell? It was like playground battles back then, there weren't actually rules. So back to Gale. He thought it would be real cool to go back to where his girlfriend died, but didn't die, and pick up whatever blew off of her, like her legs or something. Maybe she looks like this now. So he went back to the wreckage of evil magic to grab the one piece of her and give it back, but he accidentally eated it and instead it got stuck in his throat. And because of that, he needs to keep eating magic items or he'll go full Oppenheimer. But it's okay, he only eats like three of your magic cheeseburgers before the next thing happens. Elminster, his grandpa who is also in 50 books and is the most powerful wizard ever, he even got a Wikipedia page. So he walks up and he says, that bomb in your tummy tum? It's a death sentence, but you can use it to blow up the big bad if you really want. You will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the absolute. But why? Um, you see, I, um, um well, that is to say, Gale, my boy. Out with it, Elminster. I'll speak as plainly as I can. I'm here for cheese and a cup of wine. After that, Elminster goes off to save the world somewhere else. Will you give Gale a big kiss on the lips, grab him by the butt, and throw him into the big bad guy tower? 
And if you want, you can beat the whole game in Act 2 by melting all the steel beams in Moonrise. You can actually beat the game- somebody beat the game in 10 minutes because they did this. In doing so, you also kill an immortal and a politician, which is generally worth it. But if you like Gale, you don't want that Babito to die. You want to cast Grease twice and become a couple magic pigs in a blanket. To do this, just stay flirty and avoid deeds that are dirty, flatter him every chance you get and think about smooching him all the time, and let him flatter you. Just break down all those barriers, man. Then in Act 2, he gets a little magic stand-in and it invites you to a romantic flowery meadow where he reads poetry to you over wine and charcuterie. Then you give him the biggest, fattest smooch you've ever seen, you go on a goofy little illusion date until you get to a point where your character can say, Show me more. Show me that big fat hog, boy. And there you go. On that night, you finally learn the real use for Mage Hand. Then if you want to know the potential endings, which I spoiled for myself for this video, and I regret, so, but, here you go. This is all Act 3, by the way. Option 1. Gale blows up his breastuses over Baldur's Gate, turning off the Mind Flayer Wi-Fi and saving the town. Option 2. He becomes the Absolute, because he's a dick in this one. Option 3. He goes and visits his babe in space and says that I want to turn as Magic Space Jesus too, and then she blows him up. Option 4. He gives his bag of magic potato chips over to the space babe and saves the world. Uh, option 5. Uh, the octopus goes to heaven. This one seems complicated. And that's basically Gale. I actually want to read through the comments of this little series, so let me know some crazy stupid shit you've done with Gale. I mean, he's got up to 11 hours of dialogue. I probably missed half of what the boy does because I mix up my party so much. Also, I put together a little playlist of uh, all the all the videos. Uh, Baldur's Gate, Mind Flayers, Gith. Uh, goodbye. If you're still here, I want to let you know I haven't been gone just because of a video game. I had a wedding that I went to, and then right after that, we flew from that other state I was in to the Geneva Convention. I, they call it Gen Con now. Uh, and then I got stuck after Gen Con in Atlanta, Georgia, along with 2,000 other planes for a layover of 34 hours in a line that looked like this. Love you, United. Thank you for the $35 refund. And thank you, Just Jacked Off, for letting me borrow a bed at four in the morning. And then we got home and we breathed out the panic for like four days. And then I downloaded Baldur's Gate. Okay, for real, thank you for watching.